Okay, good morning. So last time we were discussing about types of data, right? So we have defined few types of data, and uh, yeah, those were descriptions, right? We were defining mostly the kinds of data we are going to analyze in this course, right? And today we are going to deal with some of these variables and how we are measuring these variables. Okay, so there are two things I'm uh, uh, planning to complete in this class. One is uh, you know, you should know about the difference between discrete variables and continuous variables. And the another one is levels of measurement. Okay, so scales that's normally we call either way, either levels of measurement or scales of measurement. Okay, so what these two are. So, see, measurement is what, what is this measurement? It's nothing but a process of assigning numbers to the quantities or variables that we are going to measure. For example, height. Height is a a quantity, right? So, well, we don't know exactly or ideally what is the height of a person. That depends upon the accuracy of the scale what you are using. So, all we can do is that we can try to get as good as possible the accuracy using the best scale possible. Okay, so we are putting a number for a height of a person. For example, my height is 5176 uh, centimeter. Okay, so I'm just approximating to the nearest possible integer. So, it could be uh, with fraction as well, 176.196283 uh, centimeter, it could be that or much more also, right? So, we are simply assigning a number to that kind of variable. Variable is something which is free to vary. Okay, in this example, it is height. Or, uh, you know, Gregor Mendel's famous ex experiments on the garden P, right? So, it, what are the variables there? It, it is one is color yellow or green then form of the flower wrinkled or round okay so these are the the, the uh, random variable random means it could vary anywhere there is no set scores for example height height could be anything it's absolutely <coughs> random right we are not putting into three bins of height categories height is a, a variable which is random that's why it's called random variable right so uh, yeah, the process is very familiar that perhaps we are often overlooked its importance. Of course, like, it's very important to know uh, basically what this measurement is, right? We, uh, and measurement could achieve a good, uh, you know, level of measurement or a very bad level of measurement. Depends upon how good it portrays the real, uh, you know, value of the quantity or attribute of the quantity. For example, a person is having exactly 176.778 exact to be exact, that is the height of it. But the measurement could be something different, right? If you use a scale, normal uh, or tape, okay, so measurement tape, it could never post one millimeter, it could never be able to measure that way. But if you use something better, like for example, vernier calipers, okay, so it, it could have better resolution. Right, so you are simply increasing the, uh, you know, the accuracy of that measurement, right? Anyway, measurement is nothing but putting some numbers to the attribute, the real attributes, okay? There is another concept called degree of freedom, what it is? It's, it's very important to know what this degree of freedom is, okay? So it is the number of values in the final calculation of a statistic that are free to vary. So your statistic is, what is a statistic? It's a single measure of some attribute of sample. Anything, for example, uh, in this group of class, I'm conducting my first session now, and the score. Okay, so the score is not the statistic. The score, I'm doing average of that score. So average of sigma, that is a statistic. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a thing, a measure or a quantity that is applicable to a sample. Okay, that is what a statistic is. Okay. So, degree of freedom is number of values in the final calculation that are free to vary. Okay, so again, you know, for once you exemplify it, the definition becomes a lot more clearer to you. So, if I say total number of family is 8, for example, in my family, total number is 8 members of my family. So, if I say number of girls in the family is X and boys is Y. So, what is the degree of freedom? It is 1 because if I say girls is 6, then it is able to vary, right? These are random variables, of course. X and Y are both are random variables. But if I know 
any of this the, the value of any of these variable the other one automatically is known because the, the total is known is that clear if the total is known only one is able to vary here okay so that is what it is right if either one knows other is automatically known so logically one is free to vary right so this way so x equal to 8 minus y okay y equal to mx plus c that kind of equation you know that is linear equation so this kind of constraints are what you call linear constraints okay so that is basically you are measuring here two measurements right one and two 2 minus 1 is the degree of freedom most of the time. So number of measurements minus 1. Okay, so that is what the, the this one. Uh, for example, for coin toss, you know, head and tail. Right? So total is number of measurements is 2. So only one is free to vary. Now for example, these, you know, the six-sided these, a small cube, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So out of it there are six measurements, right? But if I know only one, okay, one piece, one side, if I know, can you calculate the all other five? No, impossible. But if I know all five, then I, I know, of course, the, the, the uh, whatever, whatever is missing out of six is only one, right? So only five is free to vary in the case of this. Is that clear? Yes. The other one is very automatic, right? You can simply calculate it from what is given here, right? So that is what for the this total minus. 1, 6 minus 1, that is 5 is the degree of freedom, right? So in this experiment of this Grieger Mendel, yellow, green, color, these are the, how many variables does it have? Seven. Only two variables, form and color, okay? So color it is yellow or green, form could be round and wrinkled. But number of observations, what, what are the number of observations here? Yellow, green, round and wrinkled. So number of observations is 4. So degree of freedom is always 4 minus 1, 3. Is that clear? Very simple. So a proof, if you want to know the proof of it, this is how it is, right? This is if you know round wrinkled, the total I'm writing here, you know, horizontal total here, and these are the vertical total, right? So if the whole is known, degree of freedom is 3. Because you can calculate whatever is missing there. Because you know the total, the total is 556, right? And uh, if the total is known, only 3 are supposed to vary. So if I know 315101108 is 32, I can easily calculate because that is what it is, right? I can minus from it. In addition, if number of yellow or green is known, either of this, number of yellow is either 416 or 140 is known, then I can simply calculate from that, minus it to get the other score, right? So then the degree of freedom is 2. And in addition, of course, all these should be known, right? These are hierarchical. And only if this number of yellow, green, known without knowing total, again, that drops back to degree of freedom is 3, right? So, uh, in addition, if number of yellow and green is also known, then comes again, degree of freedom is only 1. That means only 1 is allowed to vary it here, okay? Because this is and green, right? In addition, number of yellow and green is known, it is degree of freedom is 1. So, uh, you know, uh, these score, these numbers, if we know as many as possible, then degree of freedom drops down. If we don't know anything, only total is known, then the degree of freedom is number of observations minus 1. Okay, so these things, you don't really need to know all these kind of, uh, you know, reduction in degree of freedom if scores need to be provided. Okay, scores are provided. But at least this this you should know, right? Degree of freedom is n minus 1, where n is number of observations. Okay? So, variable is a quantity that may vary from object to object. Of course, that is what the variable is. Okay? So, that varies from object to object. Okay? Something which is uh, being measured. Here in the previous example, variables are color, a form of the flower. Okay? Or it could be height, it could be time. Okay, or it could be temperature. These are the variables, right? Now, what is the sample or data set? Data set and sample are synonyms, right? It's a collection of values of one or more variable. Okay? So, univariate data sets have only one variable, while multivariate data sets have more than one variable. Okay? So, either one variable or more than one variable. Data set is nothing but values of that variable. So, for example, 
it could be yeah the one, uh, one previous example I told you the marks of this class student name versus marks okay so that entire thing from putting in an excel sheet so there is a data set right in a sheet that is just called a sample so there is my sample okay so if I perform some calculations based on that sample for example standard deviation or average or mean median more all these are statistic singular statistic so study about statistics is what you call statistics right so there is one so variables that we measure can be discrete or continuous so these two kinds of variables work right discrete variable or continuous so in the case of discrete it can be placed in one to one correspondence with integers so the value of discrete variables are always integer so integer versus fractions so numbers without fraction is what you call integer 2 is integer, 6 is integer, 2.6 is not integer, pi is not an integer, root of 2 is not integer is that clear? integer is something that do not have any fraction, very simple so discrete variable values are always integer ok so if, just think about it, any kind of variable if I ask you is it discrete or continuous you should think this way would the value be ever be a, a fraction? So it could never be a fraction. So that's very simple as that. Okay? So if it could be a fraction, then it could be a continuous variable. But if it's not, if it's an integer, then it has to be discrete variable. Okay? So it follows a distribution pattern, what we call as Poisson distribution, that we are going to cover in another class, right? So discrete variables follow Poisson distribution, while continuous variables follow Gaussian distribution. The two kinds of probability distributions. In fact, many kinds, but these two are concerned with the, the variables. Okay? So it can be counted and not exactly. So that is what the discrete variables are. You can count it. So that it is integer. Number of days in a week, we know it is seven. Number of work days in a week in this universe it is five. Right? So blood types O O A O A B U. Okay, so all these are we can count it. There is no fraction in this kind of thresholds, right? So, it does not have to be an integer also. Average number of girls in a classroom, 17.5, that is not an integer. But again, that is a discrete variable, right? We know the score, that is absolutely certain. That will not vary, right? No swaying. And it is not affected by the precision of the scale of machine. So, whatever the scale you use, whatever supercomputer you use, Okay, and you are calculating the mean of uh, you know a number of girls average and mean are same right so calculate average average is always average certain okay so it is not increasing in uh, quantity right probability of rolling an even uh, number on a disc you know one two three four five six out of which even it will be three or will be three right so probability is you can say in a common way you can say 50 percent chances for getting an even side on a disc okay, and 50 percent chance to get an or side on a disc right so this 50 percent chance that we normally use in our everyday life and if you want to say that in probability it's nothing but 0.5 probability is 0.5 because always probability is expressed between 0 and 1 okay so always in fractions so if i say there is a probability of 0.9 to rain today, that means very high probability, right? 19 percentage in our everyday uh, language. So that is what the probability is. Okay. So probability of rolling an even number on a disc, it is 0.5. So again, that is an integer, but again, that is a discrete. So being an integer, or I mean, being a fraction or a being an integer is not uh, a textbook definition for di differentiating. Uh, you know, continuous as well as discrete. Okay, you have to apply your logic as well. Cost of lunch, for example, here in our canteen is 40 rupees for a lunch. It will be 40 rupees, 30 paise. Okay, so again, that is a, a, a discrete quantity. It's not a continuously varying, uh, uh, you know, because or in India we have about uh, 1 paise as the lowest one, right? So there is nothing lower than 1 paise. We don't normally express in cost. Right, so that that variables are discrete variables. Okay, is that clear? So 40.1 for example, that is in, that is a not an integer, that is a fraction, but still it is a discrete variable. Fine. Right? So 
So if I say more example, the number of particles emitted by a radioactive source, so counts per minute. So that is a very good example of a Poisson distribution. Okay? So that is a discrete variable. Because particles are emitted one after one, one after one. It could never be a fraction of the particle. Okay? So APGAR scores of an infant 60 seconds after birth. So this score is only, uh, you know, it's named after the person who revised the score and uh, anesthetist. So this is about the health of an infant after the birth. So if the score is high, means the infant, survival rate of infant is also high. So this score is again, this it is between 1 and or 0 and 10. So that, that is basically a, uh, uh, an example of a discrete. Another example could be what? Marks in the class. That is again, that is a discrete one, right? But it could be having fraction as well. But the fraction could never be the infinite fraction. Okay? And uh, IQ score, for example. Okay, IQ scores, again, normally IQ scores do not have any fraction. Right? So these are examples of uh, discrete variables. Number of children in a family. There is no confusion there. It's always a discrete. Right? You can never have a 0.5 uh, boys in a family. Right? So, color of a person's hair. Black, gray, red, brown. Again, you can say, well, sometimes it is a mixture of the colors. Right? So it is not a discrete, it could be a continuous as well. Now if you look in the textbook, some textbooks say color of the hair is a continuous thing. Some say it is discrete, but I always go with the discrete assumption. Given that, everybody agrees upon the color. Okay, so if a person is having slightly grey color, okay? so for example mine, I have certain grey hair, so it is like slightly grey. No issue, if everybody agrees upon that, it is a discrete. Quantity is discrete, it is a slightly gray. Okay, so that is what it is. Sometimes it's really tricky, that is what I'm saying. Okay, so you should think your law, apply your law, is it a discrete or continuous? Okay, so gender of the child, of course, mostly it is male or female, right? So that is discrete. So you can also say, well, how about transgenders, right? So, well, that could also be, if you consider the transgender as a separate gender, again, that is a discrete, right? It can never be a continuous variable, right? So, state of residence of Indian citizen, Punjab or in Kerala, right? State of residence where you are living right now. So, that's only one, one place, right? So, how about in uh, unit territories, right? In Chandigarh, or you can say, oh, I'm living in Haryana as well as in uh, Punjab. Well, exceptions are always there, right? But still, again, that is a a kind of a discrete variable in the normal sense. Okay? So, setting aside the uh, this kind of exceptions. Cause of death of a newborn, again, there is a discrete, one cause. And it could also have a, a, a multiple causes together acting upon. But again, that multiplicity, if the, the, how many factors are contributed upon uh, the cause of death of an infant, if that uh, is not, again, there is a discrete variable. It's now never be a continuous variable. So, all this follow the Poisson distribution. Okay, some more examples to make you very clear about it. Number of one calls arriving in a call center per minute. So, it could never be a half call, right? Or 0.17356 call. Okay, it's always one or two, right? So, this is, you can count it simply. You, can you count or you cannot count? That's uh, one, uh, you know, very important definition for this discrete uh, this or practice. Number of goals in sports involving two competing teams. In sports means it could be a softball or it could be uh, of course soccer, right? Goal, right? Or hockey as well. There is a goal there. So number of deaths per year in a given age group. So number of death, death you can measure, you can count number one, two, three, four, five. Right? Number of jumps in stock price in a given time interval. So up and down, right? Up, up things you can count it, right? Under an assumption of homogeneity, number of times in web server is accessed per minute. You can never access half. You have to access or do not access at all. Dead or alive like that, right? Number of mutations in a given stretch of DNA after certain amount of radiation. I could ask you this question. And if I ask you to calculate the probability, there are two ways or many ways. Binomial distribution way you can calculate the probability or Poisson distribution formula you can apply or it could, you can also apply some uh, really tricky Gaussian formula for capturing the probability. But first of all, if I give you this kind of uh, problem, 
then you should come to your mind first is at least this three more components. So number of mutations in the structure of DNA is always this three. Right? So mutations, you can count it, you can say number, this many mutations, so this many SLPs in that gene. Where mutation can never be fast. Fast mutation means no cells at all. So it is a Poisson distribution. So you will have to apply that Poisson distribution formula to solve the probability of whatever the example which I am giving you. Okay, so that is very important. Now, what is this continuous variable? The value can infinitely vary. So it's very important, it is infinitely. So even you can express it in integer. So sometimes the value can be expressed in integer that is not continuous. For example, average or probability. Okay, so average of the class, the mark class, uh, you know, marks of this particular class. That is an integer, but of course that is not free to vary infinitely. Okay, so that is a poison or discrete, but in this case it is infinitely uh, it could be able to vary. Right? Examples are height or weight, always height and weight are uh, you know continuous variable. Okay? So these two are very important, very easy uh, or temperature again that is also continuous right the, the graph of uh, uh, you know any, any kind of uh, melting curve of water for example right? so these are continuous infinite number of times right the value can be different the height is frequently recorded only the nearest odd inch inch of the centimeter right I explained to you before us right so it could be yeah so uh, you know we are approximating the real score that the real values of the attributes are can vary infinitely, so we are simply approximating. So you cannot say 1.76.1 that is a discrete value, 176.2 is another discrete value, 3 is another discrete, so it is all discrete, that is wrong. So we are simply approximating because of the limitations in our way of measuring, right? So that is what, so in this case, the vernier, you know, the principle, right? it's very simple. For example, if I measure here, so we look at the, the, the you know the, these two lines sync each other or comes in line. Here it is, second line is coming in line with the uh, bottom line. Okay, so in this case, it is the fifth line is coming in line with the bottom one. So in this case, it is 5.5 millimeter. 5.5 millimeter means what? 0.55 centimeter, right? So the accuracy is higher. So, well, vernier is a normal vernier calipers, and if you can use certain electronic calipers with very high accuracy, so you know integers can really vary, right? So uh, there is what it is. Fraction could be extremely, the precision could be higher. So continuous variables can be measured or calculated, but only shown as a range of values. Right? So that is what it is. Can be expressed as a function as well. So distance a car has traveled, length or distance, these are only approximations, right? A car is traveling, I say, you know, it is 3,300 kilometers from my house, the place where I born and here, Kerala and Punjab. So 3,300, again, it's just an approximation. It could be, even if you express in meters, millimeter, I can increase infinitely the precision of my measurement, right? Height of a tree, again, I told you, the height is a continuous variable. Acceleration of a car, so meter per second square, right? Whatever the acceleration is that, so it could very, very continuously, right? We are simply saying I drove today 40 km per hour, it could be 40.17637, right? So temperature is again another, uh, you know, example of a continuous variable. Here, velocity of an object in a free fall, you know, this is a time and this is the velocity. Velocity keeps on increasing. Right, as the time goes on, right? So it is 9.8 meter per second square. That is the acceleration, right? That is not the velocity. Velocity keeps on increasing, right? So that is, uh, you know, continuously varying. It's not discrete varying. It's step by step. That is not the acceleration. Right? It's very continuous. Or smooth, right? So can I have the thickness? If you are done with the thickness. Okay, so I ask you certain questions, right? Number of channels on your TV. So can uh, Sonu put the answer? Discrete. It's discrete, why? 
yeah, channel, two channels together you cannot watch, right, or three channels, these are, right, you can count it, you can number it, right, you can count it, yeah, for sure, sit down please. Now, a person's age, can uh, if Paul Gill answer it? Discreet. Why so? Yes? For example, I'm 33 years old. 33, then point something I can put days. Then I can also put minutes, seconds, milliseconds. It's increasing, right? It's very infinite. So it is a continuous, right? Sit down. So I ask you elements on a periodic table to chain counts. Discrete, right? Can you say it loud, please? Yeah, so it is basically increasing in a step, right? So proton, of course, the proton number is down. Proton number in the atom, right? The nucleus. So as it's step always for number 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, so it is in discrete. So that's always a discrete value. Now, time of the day, I ask you, Alka Rani. Why? Yeah, absolutely. That is right. Continuous. Now, I ask you for the day of the week to, uh, you know, Kunj, Kunj Bihari Gupta. History. Right? So? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So, of course, that's a very easy. Right? Now, I ask you for population uh, to Anuradha. Population of a species. It's continuous. Why so? No, it says population of a species. For example, population of human beings on planet Earth. Or well, universe, you can say, because in the International Space Station we have certain number of uh, human beings, right? So, is it a, a continuously varying uh, variable or is it discrete? Yes? It's discrete, right? So, persons are always better. Sit down. So, you know, I cannot say that the population of India is, uh, you know, some uh, fraction. People are one, you are counting one, two, three, four, like that, right? You can never have a half person, right? Babies are also one particular individual. So, you cannot say, oh, a person was born on the death, death bed. Again, it's one individual, right? So, it can never be a fraction, unless that you are doing some kind of quantum mechanics, right? That is what, uh, you know, this Schrodinger is a cat can be half alive and half dead. So unless this is a quantum mechanics, then it's always discrete, right? So that is why it's a discrete. Number of genes in our DNA to uh, roughly power. Discrete. Right? Partial genes, could it be? So it's of course it's a discrete baby, right? Now length of a piece of a rope to uh, uh, asim machine. Oh, length is of course. You said discrete or what? What did you say? Number of genes. Like you have already shown that. Okay, okay, okay. Right, right. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I got confused. Okay. Now I'm asking you how happy you feel now. I'm, I'm measuring the happiness. So I'm asking to Tausif. Why? Yes. Yeah, 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 well, sit down. So it is a continuous, right? Of course. And more than that, there are a lot of problems there. Happiness, can you measure happiness? No. So that is the main problem that is psychology a science or not a science. There so many of these debates are going on and if you read this kind of popular science articles. Okay? So that is of course, there is a continuous value. Speed you are walking is continuous value, right? You, have, yeah, you know, you can change, I mean, you can express in fractions as well, right? Infinite fractions. Now, this is what you call the probability diagrams, okay? So, uh, th these are the scores. Okay, so it could be anything. This the values of the standard, uh, I mean, random variables are plotted here on the x-axis, and on the y-axis it is a probability. So 
this is how it is right this is continuous the values these are values right values of the random variables are continuously able to vary in the case of continuous variables while discrete variables these the values can vary only step by step is that clear that is how the probability distribution drops out okay so short so here these are actually the, the probability scores okay and these are the values of the standard I mean, uh, the random variable. Here you can say this is sigma, right? Sigma, mu, sigma, what are these notations? For example, marks of the class. Okay? So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving you a quiz in this class and um, I'm plotting the total summary in this kind of probability diagram. Okay? So, out of 100, most of the students score around 75 percentage. Okay? Uh, around 75 so then the average of the marks in this class is 75 right? so that is what is 7 mu stands for mu is the average okay? so most of the measurements of this class will vary around the standard deviation I mean around the mean of that right so most of the students are going to get very near the 75 so very near means that is what it is so 75 is the probability to take 75 is very high and very near 75 could be plus so that is what here this side is right mu that is the right side of mu is uh, plus. plus 75 some students can get 78 also right and uh, it could be 70 69 70 that is the minus value of the this one okay so most of them are going to get around 75 right so that is one sigma okay so mu plus or minus one sigma sigma is standard deviation so once we come to the standard deviation you will know right how to get the standard deviation but that is what most are going to get within one standard deviation of mean okay so i, I think you won't make sense unless you know what standard deviation is but most means 68 percentage are going to get okay in one standard deviation of mean now the rest, out of rest, 95 percent are going to get the values of that standard uh, random variable within two sigma, two standard deviations of the mean. Okay, and then 99.7, almost everybody is going to get within three standard deviations of the mean. And still, these are outliers. Okay, so outliers means some some students can get 100 out of 100 who are not even within three standard deviations of the mean so that would be here or that particular extremely high performing student would be right here and this who, who are these students here extremely low performing zero marks for example that means not even in three standard deviations of the mean okay? so this is what you call three sigma rule or empirical rule or 65 95 99.7 rule okay so that we are going to cover up later but just give you an overview of what this rule is about right so, by looking at this probability distribution, you will know all this a continuous or discrete. So here it is the value is sum of the two days. Okay, you are putting two days okay, and then you are putting the sum of the scores. So mostly it is seven. Okay, and then it could vary also, right? So depends upon this one. Is it one sigma, two sigma, three sigma? So outliers here is two and twelve to get that probability of getting two as the sum of two d's is very low okay so to, to get two means you need to get first d is one second d is also one to get that is very very tough and also to get 12 is also very tough right first d is you are getting six second d is also you are getting same six then only you will get 12 so probability of finding this is very low but probability of getting seven is very high that is what this probability distribution comes up is that clear so, of course, you will have to avoid certain dangers, for example, attaching unwarranted significance to certain statistic. You are putting some statistics and putting a lot of significance to that statistics. Okay? So, uh, efficacy of drugs, for example, you are averaging and with standard deviation, you are saying it's very effective. At the same time, one person is dying out of that particular drug, then, of course, that is not effective at all. Right? So it is not that it's only statistic that matters, but you have to consider everything. Okay? So then manipulating our data in ways that can destroy the meaning. For example, in this case, see this car code, person is simply toggling time and temperature. 
Does it make any sense? Of course not, right? You have to apply the logic, that's very important. Adding time and temperature together makes more. No sense at all, right? Performing meaning the statistical operations on the data. That those things of course you have to avoid. Is that clear? Now let's start up this levels of measurement. Okay, so this is by a person called Stanley Smith Stevens. Yeah? So in uh, you know 1946 in his paper on the theory of scales of measurement in science. That paper is available in the website, in the course website, go and download and have a look. Okay? So according to Stanley Smith Stevens, all measurements in science are conducted using four different types of scales: nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. At least you should know the difference between nominal and the rest. Ordinal interval and ratio, all you can say together. But nominal, you should know but what makes nominal uh, set aside from the rest. Okay, so that's very important. So, levels, attributes are properties that are similar to the numbers. I told you, right? For example, height, an attribute, or standard, standard variable, you are putting that attribute as close as possible by certain set of numbers. So it depends upon the accuracy of that measurement. Right? So when we assign numbers to the attribute, we do we can do poorly, or we can get a very high accuracy as well, very low accuracy as well. For example, I'm using a you know a sand clock to measure the time. The accuracy of the sand clock is very low, right? We know, right? But we can also use atomic clock to measure the you know the time time frame. Okay, so uh, uh, chronometer of course, atomic chronometer where the accuracy is very high. So it depends upon how you are measuring certain uh, uh, attributes, right? The, the standard variables in fact. So in such case we achieve only a low level of measurement if the accuracy is quite low. Right? So if the accuracy is very high, that means you are getting a high level of measurement. So these are in hierarchy. So nominal is very low level of measurement. Then comes ordinal, then come internal, then come ratio, then come absolute. That means that absolutely certain. So, for example, the height of a, a person is 100 centimeter. That is absolute. Whatever way you are measuring, it's absolutely 100. For example, okay. So that case it is that is what, right? And then to the ratio. So if you come from below, so that means that you are losing the accuracy. Okay. So you are losing the level of that measure. So, if the properties of our assigned numbers correspond properly to those assigned attributes, we achieve quite a high level of measurement. That means accuracy is also quite high. Okay? Accuracy is not exactly this one to, to make you understand how I'm using that term. Okay, accuracy. So, you see nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, these three, these four levels of measurement. What are this? Nominal is same or different, only that. If I say my income is same as yours or my income is different from yours, so that is only only thing that you are going to measure. Is it same or different? That is what nominal is. Okay? In this case, ordinal, you know the word meaning ordinal order, right? So ordering is same. If my, our incomes are different, mine is greater or less than yours. So the order matters there. Right? So that means if our incomes are different, that means that same or different is also known that. Okay, so that means all ordinary measurements are nominal or so. So these are hierarchy. If you say ratio level, okay, so certain measurement achieves ratio level, that means it also achieves interval, it also achieves ordinal, it also achieves nominal. Okay? So interval means relative difference. <coughs> So the difference between my income and yours might be say twice as great as different between my income and the government's. So the interval is also not there. Okay, so that is what it is. Uh, if you say ratio, ratio is zero point, my brother's income is about ten times what mine is. So ten times. So if you put a ratio of my income and my brother's income, it is one by ten. My income is uh, one, one tenth of my brother's income or my brother's income is 10 times my income. Okay, so you know this times means you are multiplying. Right? Then interval is you know the, the relative differences. You know the difference is plus or minus. So my income plus 4 is your income. If I say that way, it is an interval scale. Is that clear? So this is multiplication factor here. It is plus or minus. And this is only the order. 
order preserving function ordinal. Right? In this simple example, six athletes try out a sprinter's position in local track team. Okay, so these uh, six athletes are running in fact. Okay, so this the sprint hundred meter dash is measured by uh, you know time the chronometer. Right, the uh, watch. Okay, the, the four different stopwatch we are using it to measure the uh, 100 meter how long will it take to finish it's very simple now this is a true time okay of course the true time we don't know the true time but for the sake of simplicity to explain it this is a true time okay? so in this watch watch number v it is a nominal scale why it is nominal because true time see 10 11 13 20 13 0 out of this Two time only two times are same. What are this? C and E. Yeah, C and E. Right. So this attempt number C and attempt number E score 13. So that is the only thing. It's same. Same scores are only this. And according to this one, these are all different. 10 is 23. That is a really makes no sense. 11 is 12. No. 13 is 20. Okay. 20 is 19. 13 is 20. See, 20, 20 is same. So if two athletes have exactly same uh, uh, time of finishing, okay, so that time is preserved in this watch. So same or different, that is the only thing that this watch is going to show you. Okay, so are you getting the point? Yes. So 13, 13, here it is 20, 20. So same or different that they have captured, that, that particular clock have captured. If you put it in the chart, these are athletes A, B, C, D, E, okay. So this is the time to finish the 100 meter run. Okay. So here you see that it is increasing than decreasing. And in this graph it is decreasing than increasing. All are different, right? Absolutely different. So what you see that here C and E are same. In this graph also C and E, the scores of C and E are also same. So same or different is the only thing that it is uh, you know, capturing. So that is why it has achieved nominal level of measurement. Nominal person with names. Name, same or different is name, right? So that is why it's nominal. Also we can call this kind of measurement as categorical. Okay? Category, you are putting two categories. Same category, different category. Right? So variables assessed on nominal scale are called categorical variables. For example, first names of the class. Again, that's a category. Good or bad? Again, it's another category. Right? Two bins you are putting. Good bin, bad bin. Same bin, different bin. Effective. Drug is effective. Drug is not effective. So these are all categorical variables. Right? You are putting in category. There is no, uh, you know, absolute numbers there. So there are only labels. For nominal category, we use this label. So for example, rocks can be generally categorized as Igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. So these are already labeled. You are putting label, and now you are okay. Uh, for most of the rocks in the campus are igneous. Okay, so you are putting the label igneous to most. Most could be more. What percentage? Right? So race is another nominal group, right? It could be Asian, it could be Hispanic, or it could be uh, you know white or black. All these races can be. Uh, you know, nominal group, category, these are categories, right? Or these are labels. Is that clear? So some valid operations are equivalence. Equivalence means same race, two are the same race. Or set membership, member of a particular community, for example. Set membership. Membership in a particular set. Okay? So, correlating to nominal categories are very difficult. So, for example, Asian or Hispanic, who is better? None. You, know, you can never say that, right? This kind of equating, uh, this kind of nominal scale are very, really, very really tough, okay? Or impossible. So, deemed to be spurious, whatever the relationship between these categorical variables, only spurious, and thus it is unimportant. Okay? So, in this example, try to figure out how many people from Assam have first name starting with letter A could be fairly arbitrary, random exercise. Does it make any sense? No, right? absolutely no sense. Or genuine cashmere and having a first name J. So that makes no sense at all. So that is the problem with this nominal uh, category. Now see the ordinal. What is this scale here? The order is preserved. 
here this term 11 increased, then 13 again increased, 20 again increased, 15, 18, right? Then 13 decreased, 18, 15 decreased, then 13 to 0, 15 to 9 again. Or is this sir? Again, you can say same or different is also preserved automatically. 15, 15 is same, 13, 13 is same, right? If you plot it, say, see, it is increasing then decreasing. After this value, right, D it is decreasing, D it is also decreasing. True time is black one, while yellow one is ordinary machine. Is that clear? Increasing or decreasing, that order is also very clear, right? So, beside capturing the same difference, stopwatch W has correct ordering. Okay? So, we say that stopwatch W has such an ordinal level of measurement. Order, order is preserved. Rank ordering that is simply puts the data on the ordinal scale. Okay? So, you are putting the order. What you are measuring in the IQ score is only the order, relative differences. That who is better than who? Or rank. Rank of, for example, if I come back to standard, Men's are test in this class okay, for IQ test. All I know is I cannot, I really cannot know that your real IQ level. All I know is that who is having better IQ, who is having lesser IQ. So same principle for gate test also. If you have done the gate test, right? If you get 816 score in the gate, what does it say about your intelligence? What does it say about your subject knowledge? Nothing is known. Only that you, as a student is getting uh, you know 97 percentile another one is getting 60 percentile chances are high that 97 percentile would be better right the order is preserved there so all these percentile or rank based measurements the other way right for the ordinal level rank and percentile are quite good attributes right so you can use this uh, rank as well as percentile or more for ordinary measurements only. Not clear? So, order, uh, this is now again the ordinal, right? Another ordinal here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 1. See, increasing or decreasing that. Uh, both are ordinal here. Clear? See that difference? There is another very important difference here. It is 0 here, right? S, attempt number S took 0 time. So that means we might not have run at all. So time is zero here. But ordinal, both ordinal do not stay as zero. That is a very big mistake. Is that clear? So you see these are different persons, right? Alice, Bob, Claire, Dana, and Edgar. Their cooking ability is measured by judge. One judge is measuring that. 10, 9, 8.5, 8, and 5. Of course, Alice is the best cook here. Now you are score minus 8, x minus 8, 2, 1.50, minus 3, the order is preserved here, right? Now I am tripling the score, 30, 27, 25, 24, 15, again the order is preserved here. Now I am cubing it the score, 1000, 729, so 614, 512, 125, cubing is also order preserved. So these are some of the operations that preserves the order. Clear? So minus or plus, then tripling, then cubing. Okay? So why it is tripling and cubing? Why not it is squaring or uh, you know multiplying by itself? Okay? So uh, power square. So that is why if I say well for cooking it doesn't matter. Or for something else, for example temperature measured by a certain thermometer, could be negative as well, right? Minus two for example. And if I'm squaring it, instead of tripping, minus 2 squared is what? 4. That is positive. See that minus the order is changed there. That is why. And also cubing preserves it, but squaring doesn't. Okay? And doubling is also, right? Uh, uh, multiplied by 2. Sometimes it causes mistakes there. But of course the cubing is very important. Is that clear? Now the ordinal scale for A, B, C. So these are partial orders. Okay? A, C is lesser than A, C is lesser than B. Okay? A is lesser than B, C is lesser than B. B and A is not explicitly stated here. B and A. That is only logically we are concluding. 
if A is lesser than B, if C is lesser than B, A is lesser than B, there is we are infinite. It is not directly stated. So that is why these are B coordinates for A, B and C. And why these B coordinates are six B coordinates possible for set of three variables. And these are what? These are strict orders, right? These are totally ordered. C is lesser than A, A is lesser than B. So the order is absolutely certain. Right? So these are what you call as uh, you know totally ordered. Six total ordered possibility for the set of three. And now these th these six is our partial order. Is that clear? So total number is now 13. 13 strict possible B coordinate possible for a set of three. Okay, so just to illustrate. Now there is another one called interval. What is this interval here? See, interval is called here 21, 23, 27, 41, 27, 1. See that how did I calculate this 21 from 10? It is this, this is the formula which I put here. Y equal to 2x plus 1. 2 into 20 is 2 into 10 is 20 plus 1 is 21. 2 into 13 is 26 plus 1 to the So 2 into 0 is 0 plus 1, 1. So this is a formula which I use to calculate the interval level. Okay? So that is what this is y to mx plus c, that kind of linear equation I'm using to calculate interval. Okay? So that is what interval. So interval, the, the real time and interval time, see it's almost same except zero. Right? This one in the case of interval, while zero in the case of actual time. Look at here. Actual time is zero. And what interval clock have calculated it is one. So there is a mistake there. So interval ratio are almost the same. Okay? So to that confusion is uh, uh, it's very common that people get confused. Is it interval or is it ratio? So that this kind of scale, many people are criticizing the Stevenson's scales of machine or levels of measurement because of that. But this is very important. Okay? Zero, the position of zero is one in the case of interval. But in the case of ratio, I am going to say it is it's preserved. Zero becomes zero. So, relative spacing, not absolute spacing of values given by Stoffer's Y matches the relative spacing of the actual values. So, the relative spacing, for example, 23 minus 21 is 2. But here it is, it's 1. Right? So, there is an equation to correct that mistake. Okay? So, there is uh, this relative spacing is preserved in the case of interval machine. Okay? So the intervals are in correct proportion that you can see. Order of a correct order of course and correct proportion as well. Proportion is also same. When numbers capture same difference, have the correct order and have the correct relative interval spacing, we say that they have achieved interval level of question. The clear interval level is also order preserving and it is also having the correct proportion of the scores. But another example is Celsius scale unit of measurement, you are defining 1 degree as 100th of the difference between freezing point and boiling point of water. So it is an interval scale. Okay? So that is what it is. Right? So at the standard temperature and pressure, right? standard pressure here is one atmospheric pressure. So that is how you are defining the Celsius scale or Fahrenheit scale. That is also an interval. Okay? And in another example, if I say today the temperature is uh, around 31 degrees. Okay. Then tomorrow it will be 21 degree. So can you say that uh, you know it is uh, 10 degrees is lesser that you can say. But you can never say it is one third of today's temperature. That you cannot say that. Right? One third makes no sense. Uh, you can say that tomorrow's temperature could be 10 degrees less than today's temperature. But it can never be. Yeah, it can never be like half of today's temperature or double or triple of today's temperature. For example, in winter it could be 1 degree, right? And today is 30 degrees. So it could never be like 30 times of that temperature. That you cannot say that. And also zero. Does it make any sense? Zero means what? Zero temperature. That is just a temperature. Zero degrees Celsius. Does it mean that absence of temperature? That is a temperature, right? Zero degree is a freezing point of water. That doesn't mean that 
temperature, the quantity is at center. That is a clear. So that is why it is an interval scale. Uh, of course, foreign heat is also interval. And how about Kelvin? Is Kelvin ratio or interval? I didn't come to the ratio there. Zero degree Kelvin doesn't make any sense. Is it absolute absence of temperature? Yes. So that is a theoretical temperature. We can never achieve it. Zero degree Kelvin or absolute zero. That means that there is no, uh, you know, molecular motion at all. Everything is ceased. Electrons are not moving. There is a kind of a theoretical sense that minus two seven three, right? Degree Celsius, the absolute zero. It's a theoretical thing that is absolutely absence of temperature. So that is why zero Kelvin or Kelvin scale is not interval. Kelvin scale is ratio. While Celsius and foreign heats are interval. Think about zero and what how the zero doesn't make any sense. Okay, so is it zero means that absolutely absence of temperature or or is it at the price of itself? Okay. Now ratio in this case, that becomes 20. That is nothing but y equal to 2x. So multiplying by an integer. So 11 becomes 22, 13 becomes 26. In this case, 0 multiplied by that 2 is again preserved. 0 is preserved. So that is why it is called ratio scale. Again, 22 divided by 20 is equal to 11 divided by 10. Right? So that is why that uh, ratio is also preserved here. Now you see that two graphs are almost same and also the position of zero is also same. So ratio is extremely high level of measurement. And only one is above the ratio that is, uh, you know, same thing, the equality. So if this and the another graph superimpose, then that is the best one possible, right? So we are going to try to achieve our uh, you know, measurement as close as the real value of the attribute. That is what the measurement is, right? So, simple example for the ratio again, uh, you know, why do not capture ratios correctly? Of course, right? But person B took twice as long as person A, but the stop was did assign a value that is twice as large. Right? This is for the interval, right? So, this is, uh, for example, 10 and 20. You look at that, 10 and 20. Here it says 21 and 41. It really needs to be twice. That is 21 and 42. But that didn't capture by the interval scale. But in the case of ratio 20 and 40, yes. So that is a high level of precision. Is that clear? So zero point of the storm was twice also incorrect as I explained to you before. Zero point in the case of interval it is one. That is wrong. But ratio it is zero. That is again that is preserved there. Both the efficiencies are corrected by the stop part Z. And that is the ratio level. So it has nominal, ordinal, interval properties, but also has correct ratios and a correct zero point. So everything it has possible. So ideally that's a very good stop part, isn't it? Is that clear? So yeah, we will continue this. Only few more slides left, so in the next class. Right? Is this done? No complete? How come you have got two uh, you know, sheets? What is this figure? Huh? M6 biosers and the middle of M4 M6 biosers. Is it like duplication? Yes? Yeah. 